we are with John and David from City of Cool. And yeah, and this is their album if you want to check that out. Now, this has been seven years in the making, so a very long time. I imagine that you'd be pretty relieved to just get it out there. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't actually been making it for seven years, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, we've been playing together for, for that long time. Okay, so it's been a work in progress. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. 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 Wow. In 2008, um, we decided to start playing this style of music. We'd played in other bands before, mm -hmm. but it was we finally decided it was time to go a bit more punk and Ooh. be a, be a two-piece <laughs> cool. rather than being an ensemble with other people. And um, thus, this. And we can talk about where we record it and stuff if you want. Yeah, yeah cool. So people who've never heard your sound before, how would you describe it? Yeah, well, I think, I mean, John's, you know, John's given a bit of a clue yeah. with, with punk, but it's not, it's not, you know, just straight old school, yeah. old school punk. Um, we like to call it primitive rock as well. It's mm -hmm. got, it's got a lot of, I think, um, influence from really early Australian um, rock music, you know, from the 70s and so on, ACDC, all, all those kind of things. They're all kind of mixed in there as well. Awesome. Yeah, and the, the stuff that we've been really listening to a lot, um, that your audience should know these should know these bands get into these bands if they're they're not into them yeah. bands like um shellac yeah. um off with an exclamation mark <laughs> um first and more sonic youth mm -hmm. um and fagazi these are the bands that we're we're really influenced by you can find find them all on youtube and on, and on the net they're they've really in influenced us and influenced the sound that we've got here yeah. which is pretty raw you know yeah. full throttle sticky carpet power <laughs> and so how was the writing and recording process? Well, I think you know, John is the, the main writer at the moment of, of the material and you know, he'd been working on, on a lot of the stuff for, for quite some time. It, it, during the course of the seven years we've been playing together, um, I've been away to work in London for a while and then I uh, came back and then we got back together again and then um, I ended up going to work in New Zealand for a while as well. So in all that time John's been working on the material and we've been rehearsing it here and there. So we had the, the kind of basis of the material down quite well, but while I was in New Zealand, we um, mm. we took the opportunity to record over there, didn't we? Yeah, we recorded in Auckland, um, oh. and we recorded at a studio which has been used a lot by the Flying Nun bands. Flying Nun being a label that's come out of Dunedin, once again, worth really worth checking out their stuff. And we recorded it late November, and then had it mastered here in Melbourne in, in March, and now it's July and we're ready to release yeah. it at the type. Yay, cool. Yeah. So on Saturday you'll be launching as well with um, a zine launch, so Plastic Knife as well, and a couple of other bands. you got Girl Fridas and The Church of Hysteria. Yep. That's so right. you like to be obviously involved in all aspects of the art scene in Melbourne. Have yeah, I, I, work with, I work with um, the guy who's created the zines, who, yeah. who Luke Sinclair, who, who works for um, the, or runs the Sticky Institute, which is under underneath Flinders Street Station there. Yeah. So we've got involved in, in doing this show together and we decided, okay, well, let's, we've got a show, let's make it our album launch. Yeah. If you've got a deadline. Yeah, stick to it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll keep it on 1700, guys. And you're back here on 1700 with City of Cool having a chat about their upcoming album launch on Saturday at the Tote, which is all very exciting. Yep. So we were talking in the ad break about, John, you went to Barcelona and you saw a band and it inspired this whole thing. Yep, well the story goes that in 2008, I went with my wife and we lived in Barcelona for a couple of months. And I went out one night searching for music, as I, as I always do, yep. and found a band called Girls Against Boys from New York City, a hardcore band, wonderful check them out <laughs> and I remember seeing that show and just being moved by it like physically and, and, and mentally and walking back to my apartment probably took an hour an hour and a half in the rain um, and just thinking I will ring David when I get back to Melbourne and I did mm -hmm. and yeah, we are now true. here that's it that's <laughs> simple story that's awesome Nice. It's a really good beginning story, like a good origin story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've known each other for years and yeah. played in other bands, so it was, was a, and it was just, you hadn't played for a while, I'd been no. doing solo stuff. So it was a perfect opportunity to get something mm -hmm. kick-started and yeah, here we are. Awesome. Mm. Yeah, and, and so I was going to say, and now <laughs> City of Cool is going to be a continuing project that will keep going. But yeah. Oh. Yeah, so you've both been on the Melbourne music scene for many years. Mm. How have you felt that it's changed over time? 
It certainly had its ups and downs. I mm. mean, it's, I think Melbourne's always had a really strong music scene compared to elsewhere, I mean, even within Australia. But, you know, it goes through phases where live music is, um, you know, uh, perhaps less popular. But I think it's really kind of hitting a, a, a time again now where people are, are getting out to see live music, which is, which is really great. Mm -hmm. what, what are the qualities that's really added to the music scene is the social networking that goes yeah. on now. Yeah. Um, there's always been a really strong basis of, of radio, press, TV in Melbourne that has allowed the arts of all different of all different forms to um, to thrive and to create and to ebb and flow. Mm -hmm. But social networking now means that you know you can get things, it get in contact. It's made things more democratic. It's made things more um, approachable and reachable. Yeah. Yeah. That's so really kind of, you can do it yourself, you know, you can, you can kind of, and in fact that's what I think one of the, one of the changes we've noticed is that yeah. promoters now really, in the past they would kind of, you could go to them as a band and say, you know, we'd like to play a show and they would pair you up with other people and so on, now it's very much come to us with a complete package, you know, do it yourself, you get all the other acts together yeah. and come, come to us and you know, put a, a proposition to us and, and that's probably more work for the, for the artist but hmm. in a way you can control what it is, you know, the whole night. So, you know, the night of the tote is, you know, a night that's been put together by the artists involved, and the totes just said, yeah, great, we'll, we'll take it. Yeah, that's awesome. And I think it's also, and absolutely, and it's, it's also for larger shows, like I've been uh, starting to contact the, the people who organise Golden Plains and Meredith, and they're very open to, to bands like us. Yeah. It's music seen in a little bit of a different way. It's like the hardcore scene that we very much took from in the 1980s and 90s is now part of what exists here because of social media. Yeah, yeah. it's amazing. Nice, all right. <laughs> well, make sure you check out that show. Once again, that is the totes on Saturday. So make sure you get down. Thanks guys, keep it on 1700.